Hello everyone and welcome to this endless engineering video on the fundamentals of control systems. Today we're going to be doing an example transfer function and we're going to be getting the transfer function of an accelerometer. First we'll talk about what an accelerometer is, then we're going to derive the mathematical model for an accelerometer which is a differential equation, and after that we're going to get the transfer function for the accelerometer. If that sounds good to you, hit that thumbs up button so we can dive right in. Let's start out with this diagram right here. So here is my poor attempt to draw a cell phone. So assume that this is your cell phone. We're going to call it the system. And in your cell phone, there's a chip that represents the accelerometer, right? So if we kind of zoomed in on that, what does that kind of look like? So you have this body right here that's attached, rigidly attached to this system. That's what this means. This is a constraint that is rigidly attached. Inside of it, it has a mass that's free to move about. And it's connected to the case of the accelerometer body with uh, some material that has some kind of stiffness and some kind of damping, right? And so from an inertial point right here, if this was an inertial point or reference frame, the case of the accelerometer moves in a coordinate frame, call it Y, right? And this is going to move the way the cell phone or whatever the system moves at. And... When this case moves, since this mass inside is free to move however it wants, it's going to move relative to the inertial frame with a coordinate of x, right? So it's moving inside. They're not necessarily moving together because it's not rigidly attached. There is a material in here, and there's a stiffness and a damping, right? And that's the whole idea. Now, the mass inside the accelerometer is typically referred to as the proof mass. So you'll see here I wrote x is the motion of the proof mass, y is the motion of the system itself because we're attached to it. Z right here, this coordinate, is the relative motion. So this is the motion of the mass relative to its case or, or the body. And really what you can write that as from here, you can see that Z is equal to X minus Y. And that's going to be important when we derive out the model. And we can also from this, you know, write that X is equal to Z plus Y. Right? And why is it important to know Z? Because for a system that's a spring mass damper system, and I have a video about this, so make sure you check it out. I'll put the link in the description below. The forces acting on the mass come from the spring and the damper have to do with how much they are displaced. And you can see from here that they're going to be displaced by a distance Z and move at a velocity in this coordinate frame. And this is very critical, and you'll see now from the equations, if we were to write from Newton's uh, second law, the summation of forces on this mass is, uh, the mass times acceleration is equal to the summation of forces, right? So if I write m x double dot my mass times the acceleration, uh, we're going to need the summation of forces. So what forces are acting on it? There's the force from the uh, stiffness and there's the force from the damping, right? And these are both impeding its motion. So while it moves this way, they're going to try to pull it back. So it's going to be minus c times z dot, and remember z is x minus y, and we have minus k times z, right? So this is our first equation, summation of forces equals mass times acceleration. So now I know that I can write x as z plus y. So from that, x double dot is going to be z double dot plus y double dot. And if I take this and plug it into this equation, what do I get? I get m z double dot plus m y double dot is equal to minus c z dot minus k z, right? So I can rearrange this equation now when I can say that m z double dot plus c z dot plus k z is equal to m times y double dot. Let's think about this for a second. So z is this relative motion of the mass to the case of the accelerometer. But remember, y is the motion of the whole case which is attached to the system, the cell phone right here. So if you move your, your cell phone, that's what y is. So y double dot is the acceleration of the system itself. And that's pretty neat. That's what the accelerometer will be able to give you. It'll be able to give you this value as a measurement. And typically when you buy the accelerometer, it comes with like a chip that's on a board somewhere and then you attach it to your system and it generates an electrical, electrical voltage. And now this is an oversimplified model. The electrical voltage that comes out of the accelerometer is typically with modern accelerometers due to the piezoelectric effect where if you have deformation 
in the system, you generate an electrical signal. That's out of scope here, though. So let me simplify this equation. Sorry, this is minus my double dot. Simplify this equation by dividing by the mass, right? And I can then say z double dot plus z dot times c over m plus k over m times z is equal to minus y double dot. And this is a second order differential equation that describes the relative motion of the mass inside the accelerometer as a function of the acceleration of the system's body, the cell phone again. And this is pretty cool because you can see that the mass of your system, so the mass of your cell phone, does not counter into the, does not come into this equation. So all you really need to know is the mass, the, the proof mass of the accelerometer, and then you can take this accelerometer, put it on any system, and it can measure or it can provide you with the ability to get the acceleration of that system. That's pretty neat, right? The other thing to look at is it's all relative motion. So you don't really need to know the actual motion of the body or the actual motion of the mass inside. You just need to know the relative motion of the mass relative to the casing of the accelerometer. So this is the fundamental equation. Let's see now how we can get the transfer function out of this equation. So now that we've derived the differential equation that describes the relative motion of the mass inside the case of the accelerometer, what we can do is we can take the Laplace transform of this equation with the initial conditions equal to zero, and I can get the transfer function in the s domain. So the Laplace transform of the second derivative is going to be s squared times the variable z of s, and then these are constants c and m, so they stay the same. Now Laplace of the first derivative is s times the variable, and then I have dot dot dot, continue here, this is k over m, stays the same as a constant. Laplace of z is just z itself in the s domain, equal to minus, and now I have y double dot. Now, I don't want to take the Laplace of y double dot, because really what the quantity that I care about is y double dot itself. So I'm just going to call this a of the system, as, the acceleration of the body. So when I take the Laplace of a of s, all I get is a of s is a function of s. And I make these capital here so that we can differentiate between time domain variables and s domain variables. So now from this equation, I can rearrange and I can write the transfer function of z of s over a s of s is equal to minus, because there's a negative sign here, 1 over uh, z s squared, sorry, times z plus s times c over m z plus k over m times z. So this is the transfer function for the model of an accelerometer that tells you that given an acceleration input, so if the body accelerates a certain way, I can tell you how much the mass moved relative to its case, given that I know this damping mass and stiffness of this system. However, that's not really how this equation is used in reality. What you as a consumer of who buys the accelerometer wants to know is this acceleration right here. Right? That's what you're concerned with. So what designers and engineers who build accelerometers do is they design the system in such a way that it has a specific stiffness, mass, and damping, and they'll know how much the mass deformed like I mentioned earlier, with modern accelerometers, you use piezoelectric materials, which are material when they deform, they generate an electrical signal. So you know, based on the property of that material, how much it deformed, how much that mass moved. So if you know this, you'll know this by measuring the electrical signal, and you've designed the accelerometer to have certain constants of damping, stiffness, and mass, then you can use this transfer function to figure out what the acceleration is every time the body moves. And that's what you provide as a measurement to the user. And this is great. Again, the biggest thing that always blows my mind about accelerometers is that the mass of the system uh, whose acceleration we're measuring doesn't appear in the equation, which is mind-blowing because you always think about Newton's second law as a summation of forces equals mass times acceleration, so you need to really know the mass to know the acceleration. Here you really don't. I mean, you do need to know but the mass, the proof mass of the system itself, which we design. But if I move it around, put it on other systems, I take the accelerometer in my cell phone, put it on my car, 
I'm measuring now the acceleration of my car, right? And if I put it on an airplane, I'm measuring the acceleration of an airplane. And that's just the magic of engineering and the magic of science and physics all working together. I hope you enjoyed this endless engineering video. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. And if you like this stuff, there's lots more where that came from. Think about subscribing to the channel and hitting the, the bell. And that way you get a notification every time we drop a new video. Thanks for watching.